It's not a good day to be a bad guy. What's up, metalheads? This is Wayne. And Michelle. And we are from the Michigan UFO Sightings and Paranormal Encounters podcast. And you are listening to Burton and Aaron on the Lost in the Dark podcast. Raise your horns. And thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Lost in the Dark Podcast. My name's Burton, and join me in welcoming our fucking brothers all the way down there from Texas. The one, the only, the Circa Arcana. Come the fuck on. These guys are incredible. Uh, you know, this is one of those episodes where it's like, I, 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 met, I met these guys. You guys are about to watch me meet these guys for the first time ever. And I immediately felt like I knew these guys my whole life. It was fucking amazing. Cannot wait to see them live one day. They are the fucking best, and I can't wait to have them back on the show. Uh, these guys are fucking amazing. But before we get into it, we always got to do some shout outs. First up, as always, our brothers from Wisconsin, uh, the Dipping Milk in Cookies podcast. Join your host, Garrett, the Cookie Commander Smith, and Mike the Master Milker, Sir Govia, as those two best friends try to figure out this thing we call life using friends, guests, and microphones. Absolutely. One of my favorite podcasts going right now. Garrett is, of course, the guitarist for Reflection of Flesh. Absolute Crip Crew family. And we just had him on, and it was amazing. I love every chance I get to talk to them. They are fucking phenomenal, and I cannot recommend all things Dipping Milk in Cookies podcast enough. Be sure to check it out. Next up is our own Michigan family right here. Uh, the Michigan UFO Sightings and Paranormal Encounters podcast. Uh, coming to you from the glacial dumping ground known as the Michigan Basin, Wayne and Michelle are a Michigan-based husband and wife educator and podcasting duo that examine UFOs and other paranormal topics within Michigan and beyond. Topics include UFOs, the paranormal, conspiracy theories, ghosts, alternative history, the Michigan Dogman, Bigfoot, cryptids, and all things strange and paranormal. Absolutely I'm a giant paranormal, like, it, it, that is a facet that fascinates me to no end. I am obsessed with the paranormal, all things paranormal, from UFOs to ghosts to cryptids, everything. Time travel, everything. I, I love it all. I don't believe it all. I'm someone that wants to believe, but I, r extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence to me, so... It's, it, you know, it's something I'm still searching for. And Wayne and Michelle had an extraordinary experience back in 2018 that led them to create this podcast, the Michigan UFO Settings and Paranormal Encounters podcast. And their, their journey has been such a unique and special one for me personally to have the, the opportunity to follow them like all of you can, but also like actually be able to be in contact with them and I've done multiple podcast episodes with them now it means the world to me so everybody be sure to check out all things Michigan UFO sightings and paranormal encounters podcast last but never least now everybody knows normally right here I do the band shout outs but this month it's all about a concert happening on Halloween night at the Diesel Concert Lounge in Michigan we got Hate Unbound Pestilent Age, our brothers in Recorruptor, Reflection of Flesh, and War. Fucking breathing process is going to be there. They just came out with a new one called The Labyrinth. Be sure to check that out. And then family members that I cannot describe ever how much I love these people. The Convalescence. They put this whole thing together. Keith from The Convalescence put this whole thing together. All of these bands in support of Michigan's own Battle Cross. Come the fuck on. One of my favorite bands of all time. A band that was like always there when I was coming up at shows in Michigan. They opened like damn near everything. And so it just means the world to me to be able to finally get to see them again. It's been years. Finally on Halloween night with all these other bands. This once in a fucking lifetime lineup. It's going to be unbelievable. Again, it's Hate em Bound. Pestilent Age, Recorruptor, Reflection of Flesh, War, The Breathing Process, The Convalescence, and Battle Cross. Come the fuck on. Everybody, if you got nothing to do on Halloween, fucking be there. Plane tickets are cheap right now, so even if you're in Australia and seeing this, 
trust me, it's going to be a show that you will never fucking forget and will probably never happen again. So I'm counting down the days. But without further ado, my friends, my friends, Crip Crew, join me in welcoming our brothers. Can't wait to have them back on Circa Arcana to Lost in the Dark podcast. Welcome, everyone. Thank you all. Love you all. Bye. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Lost in the Dark. Tonight, we have Kevin, Johnny, Ben, and Frank from Circa Arcana. What is up, guys? What's up, motherfuckers? Holy shit, dude. We're uh, uh, so good to have you guys here. Where are you guys, uh, where are you guys at right now? We are actually at my house. Uh, this is like our home studio slash rehearsal space. Everything. All of the above. <laughs> we've, we've taken they, fucking photo shoots here and shit. That, but that's in, is that in El Paso? El Paso, Texas, man. El yeah. Paso, Texas. And that yeah. is, is that where you all are originally from? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. El Chuco, man. El Chuco, bro. That's, Chuco, uh, that's what they call us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> El Paso. El Chuco. And, Fantastic. It is, it is really wonderful to finally have you guys. Like, I, you know, I've, I've really, uh, I've gotten into you guys quite a bit. Uh, I did a, a, a dark reaction to a recent lyric video that you put out for the tower. Uh, so this is the first time you guys have been actually on the show, though. So that's always extra exciting for me. So I like to always kind of like start off with a little like icebreaker thing. I'm curious because 99% of the world, right, does er, thinks that heavy metal is nobody listens to it, right? Like 99% of the world, most people aren't into heavy metal. So I'm curious about your personal heavy metal origins how did you get into the music to begin with yeah. dude um okay so for me um that's actually a pretty cool story because uh since i was like but a wee little lad my dad had this brown briefcase dude full of like a bunch of different tapes and um i would he would tell me choose one and i would always pull out the one that looked the coolest and it had eddie which was iron maiden obviously so um yeah since i was a young kid yeah there you go i see in the background <laughs> So I was like, oh, dude, this is killer. And that kind of just drove me in. And I just started listening to different variations. And then I met these guys and we all play together, moan together. It's super cool. Fantastic. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, kind of the same thing. I kind of, uh, it was actually my uncle who uh, got me into like rock music and whatnot. Uh, he was like all into like 80s, 90s. So my I grew up uh, listening to like Nirvana and then all the old school stuff too, you know, like Led Zeppelin, ACDC, Iron Maiden, of course. And then when I got into metal, it was, uh, fuck, what year was it? When like that Toxicity album came out and System of a Down Toxicity. That, yeah, 2002 that album, ish. Yeah. That prime fucking era, dude. That's, I don't even remember mm -hmm. what grade I was in. I was in fucking <laughs> middle school. And when that shit came out, I remember that was like the first. The first like metal albums I got was uh, Toxicity by System of a Down, Wisconsin Death Trip by Static X, and uh, I don't know if Duality was out yet or not, but it was in that fucking time, time frame too by Slipknot, mm -hmm. and those were like the first like real metal bands that I was listening to, and uh, yeah, I just kind of started from there, dude, and yeah, it speaks to you, you know? Yeah, man. <laughs> Benny? Yeah, well, I started, uh, I'm kind of the oldest one right now in the room, so uh, what got me started was White Zombies, La Sexorcista. Um, that, that's where I got started all together, and, you know, it, it evolved from there. I, I'm a big uh, Deftones fan, actually, so what we write here this. is kind of like a whole lot different than what, what I was used to, but uh, that's where I started in the, the zombie era. Fantastic. Fuck yeah. And I'm the young one. Yeah, yeah frankly, yeah, he's, the young, <laughs> he's the one that doesn't have back pain yet. That's right. <laughs> yeah. His kidneys um, still work. Honestly, I was a core head from the beginning. Like, I love, like, early Parkway and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Actually, I started playing drums, honestly, even before I was even into rock music. So I was playing, like, to a whole bunch of hip-hop and all that. And then I got into, like, Disturbed, Breaking Benjamin. And then I got into like all these like core bands and stuff like that. So beautiful. Yeah. No, I'm 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 a massive Parkway fan. Uh, absolutely huge. I love I I, I love Rob Zombie. I absolutely love Rob Zombie oh, and White yeah. Zombie. And I re just recently actually we'll get into this a little bit later. But I recently have been going through all of his movies. 
Uh, I re- I realized I hadn't seen all of them yet, and so I was like, I need to get into these. Uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, and no, and, and, and do you? Um, my uh, my uncle is actually the one that got me into it all too. So yeah, I can kind of like fuck yeah, That's relate. Yeah, to that, that type of yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool now, man. Now, uh, when I did the reaction video for the tower, is that the most recent thing you have released? Yes. Yes. Okay. As of, as of now, yes. Uh huh. Beautiful. And and uh, anything real quick that uh, anything upcoming? I know you guys went on a tour over the summer, but anything upcoming, real quick, that you want to plug to just get out there for everyone? Yeah. So actually, we had a couple things coming up that are going to be pretty awesome, man. Yeah. Um, we are going to have a show here in our in our hometown, El Paso, Texas, which is pretty crazy because. We've been to Florida, um, Austin, All Santa Fe, Texas, Texas, yeah, pretty Arizona. much all the time, and we haven't played here. So, Holy shit. so um, you've been everywhere but the hometown. But home, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have a show on December 10th at the Rock House Bar and Grill, which is here in El Paso. So, um, yeah, everybody that lives here, you're invited. If you don't live here, you're still invited, or I will find you. Um, we also Play, have Plane our, tickets are not that expensive right now. They're really so. not. They're really not, dude. They're you're really saying. over here, bro. Yeah. Um, and we do have our full length EP, um, Bridge of Achendi, coming out pretty soon. So that should be pretty soon here. And I can promise you, if you like the tower, you're going to be blown away by like the, rest the rest of it. Of it. Yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> uh, is it recorded already? It is. It's fully recorded. We're just uh, finalizing like the last steps. We're waiting on like the last master Beautiful. for the last Beautiful. song. Uh, and then, of course, it's like uh, all the other bullshit that kind of yeah. goes with like, yeah. Oh, you know, really? trying, trying to set up like merch and uh yeah. you know campaigns for like promotion pr campaigns and you know all that other crap that goes with uh the non-fun part of being a fucking band yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. absolutely <laughs> absolutely that now so the the next so was i correct in that uh reaction video in that the tower is the second single and there's only two singles out that you've ever released. Was I correct in that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. That was, a, that was the second song we wrote. That was, uh, that's why I was a second single. Yeah. Yeah. So where, yeah. uh, where'd you guys, uh, did you record the new stuff in a studio? At my house. Beautiful. Right here, right? Dude, yes. yeah, he's, he's a living <laughs> legend, dude. Right here, bro. Yeah. Hell yeah. In El Paso, bro. Yeah. So, uh, and you guys formed as far as I can tell and, Again, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, 2015? No. No? I was waiting. No, actually, so Frank and I used to play in a band together before. Uh, but Circa Arcana actually came came about uh, during the COVID pandemic, actually. Um, really? Yeah. So we were in a band together um, right before COVID happened. And then COVID happened. And, like, the band fell apart uh so it was like us us two plus our other guitarist that's not here right now felipe Mm -hmm. um and then when the whole pandemic started like texas got pretty wild dude el paso was actually as bad as new york um oh in in, in the sense of covid yeah i'm a registered nurse that's like my day job so yeah the shit was real and uh so we got together during during covid and then we brought these guys on board as well and uh, we started that whole writing process, but like the reason why it's been a while to like put out this EP was cause like that shit was crazy, dude. Like we had, there was like curfews and then we had to make sure everybody was like, okay, make sure people would, you know, make sure people weren't not getting, getting sick, trying to make sure that we wouldn't, we weren't going to like, you know, infect each other or, yeah, what, absolutely. Infect each other yeah. or whatever, you know? So that shit fucking put a huge dent and like the band but i mean we somehow managed now now things are better which is cool you know thank goodness but um yeah we came about um 2020 yeah, right, saying? right right when that fucking right when covid was like you know right in there <laughs> <laughs> good catch good yeah, catch <laughs> absolutely right wow okay yeah. so so you guys have you now uh when was the first show you got to play live then? It was in Houston, Texas, three, three, four months ago. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. Shout out to the peeps in Houston, man. But if you've never played a show in Houston or you've never been around the Houston metal scene, I literally saw a human being fold in half. 
over a PA <laughs> system and jump up and get right back into the pit. Yeah. And I was just up there like, uh, like, dude, I was like, it was the best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, that was our first show. Yeah, our first show was um, in Houston. And then uh, the next night we played in Austin. Uh, okay. Come and take it. Yeah. So that was that was pretty cool. Yeah, those were our first two shows. Fantastic. I'm I'm glad I'm glad that you guys have had at least have uh, some shows under your belt. That's really because yes. you know that's a rare thing right now. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fantastic. Super thankful. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, so all uh, all of you are musicians. It, you just formed very recently. Then, uh, how how did you get all get started into playing music at all? I'm go first. All right. So uh, when I was in uh, middle school, eighth grade to be exact, well, summer of seventh to eighth grade, I think my mom was just fucking tired of me just staying at home, dude, like fucking playing video games all day. So she told me, she was like, you got two fucking options, you know? Like, I, I think I could curse on here. I don't give a fuck. Oh, fuck you it, can right? fucking yeah. say whatever the fuck you want. Oh, fuck yeah, Thank dude. fucking God, yeah. man. <laughs> dude. So, so she was like, you know what? I'm tired of seeing you here. You're not doing anything productive. She's like, you got two fucking things you can do. She's like, you could either uh, do karate or uh Which I did. or or go to or or take guitar lessons so okay. you know my critical thinking kicked in and i was like do i want to get my i'm a small little brown boy do i really want to get my ass whooped every fucking day or maybe play guitar you know and chicks like and guitar that, right so that's what they say right i mean and, and it's weird dude because i wasn't really like into like uh like rock music and shit like I, I was like i enjoyed it but not like to the degree that it was and then uh right I started taking some guitar classes that just that summer and um, loved it. And then after that, I just I took classes maybe for about six months. And then after that, just kind of went on on my own from there and haven't stopped since. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it was like I told people I had always started listening to metal since I was really young. Um, and I remember specifically my dad. I was like maybe 13, 14. Like oh, I might have been younger than that, to be honest. But he took me to a Motley Crue concert. And if you've ever Aww. been to a Motley Crue concert... You know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Um, so after that, I was like, dude, I want to do that shit forever. So um, I started playing guitar, actually. Um, when I was younger, I taught myself how to play it because I lived in, like, Presidio, Texas, which it was, like, the coolest thing. There was, like, a Dollar General. Um, so, yeah, I picked up a guitar. Um, <laughs> and then after that, I started kind of messing around with vocals a lot when I was younger. And kind of over the years, I got into it, joined a bunch of different bands, and actually got to see these guys play in their bands um quite a bit before we were a band together so um it's been a cool little journey music wise but yeah man it's music's been my life since i was a little kid and still is and i'm glad i get to do with these guys because they kick ass that's, you, a, that's a great story hell yeah thank <laughs> me you go for it. um well again like i wasn't i didn't really grow up like listening to rock so yeah. my i was actually a christian boy oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, i was dad. too i was too <laughs> And then my dad bought me a guitar, actually, too. And I was like, well, I know my basic chords. And he, he somehow brought in a drum set. I was like, oh, cool. I like this a little more. I get to bang on shit. So <laughs> yeah, I was yeah, like, dude. fuck it. And then he taught me the <laughs> basics, and I just went from there. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, How well, was it learning to play guitar in the prehistoric age? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Did you meet Elvis, bro? <laughs> Well, I actually, uh, I didn't do any bands here in El Paso until now. I lived in Albuquerque for about uh, 12 years. I had most of my bands there. Uh, it, was, it was a good journey. You know, we didn't do too much, but I think moving down here was probably the best thing for me uh, musically. Now I get to enjoy with these guys, and we actually have a good unity all together. Um, yeah, I think it's the best thing that we've ever really <laughs> created. Fuck yeah, um, dude. That I ever even heard, like, shit is out of this fucking world, in my uh, opinion. What would you say, specifically you, what would you say your um, influences are? Who, who would you name as your biggest influences? You're going you're gonna to probably get all cringy on me, but uh, my biggest, my biggest, my hero is... Um, Elvis. Uh, no. <laughs> Elvis. No. no, no, it's actually Sam Rivers. <laughs> oh, cool. Uh, and Biscuit. Oh shit! Yeah. So that's wow. that's always been my he's been my biggest influence throughout my whole uh, bass playing time. 
Okay. You're my ages, ages of rock, I guess, since I'm, I'm <laughs> like years over here with the white hair yeah. and shit. You look good. You yeah, look good. good. That's um, awesome. Salt and pepper. And, oh, this looks amazing, by the way. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, I am also curious, really curious, actually, where does the name Circa Arcana even come from? All right. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I, I don't. Oh, my God. Dude, I wish Felipe was here because he's the one. That I, I, like, he tells us that, that the words mean certain things. And then I Googled that shit. He's like, oh, no, it's because Circa means this shit and Arcana means this shit. And then I Googled it. I'm like, dude, what fucking Google are you looking at, bro? I don't fucking find any of that, bro. Those references, bro. I think you're full of shit, but whatever. Just like that. Fuck. But it sounded cool. Yeah. We were all trying to come up with names. And, like, we couldn't come up with anything. He was actually my guitarist, dude. He came up with the name. And we were like, you know what? I like it. it sounds cool. Everyone was like, out of the best of the options. We were like, yeah, that it's sounds like, cool. A lot of our shit comes down to, like, does it sound really fucked up? And... Does it look cool when you write it out? And if yeah. we agree on those two things, yeah, then it's going. It's got like ties to like black magic, um, okay. the whole like tarot card type reading shit. Um, it goes into like a lot of really creepy, weird ass shit that like when we tell people, they're like, huh? Yeah. It's a lot of our kind of just like even off the name, a lot of it, if you really pay attention to like the song names, the pictures that we post on our social media, um, even in the lyrics, or um, even in the backing tracks, um, you'll find out a bunch of creepy things that people won't even notice until you like actually sit there and listen. Like, um, but like you said, the tarot cards, the whole first album is kind of best based around that whole theme and our own experience of that card. So it's pretty cool. Oh, oh wow, that's awesome. Yeah, there's like that's a awesome. whole fucking deep meaning behind it, but people don't really like. Uh, like we leave, we leave it up to interpretation, like you know what I mean? Because yeah, like absolutely. people aren't gonna people don't give a fuck, you know. <laughs> to me, to me, it has like this super deep meaning, yeah. and somebody could just be washing their dishes to like, ah, I fucking like, like that. Word. That's a like, cool that's jam. <laughs> it's a nice jam, you know. Yeah, I have I have like I've met fans that are like, dude, I I fucking listen to your song when I'm fucking repping in the gym, and I'm like, mm -hmm. all right, cool, dude. Like I hope you know it's like about murdering fucking not. <laughs> 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 you know, like, like, yes. <laughs> so, you know yeah. that everything you just said and in combination as long as it rolls off the tongue nicely and sounds cool metalheads love it so okay dude and it's all for them dude at the end of the day yes. like, we want we, we, make, we try to make music that like our goal has always been that like has been like make music that people are gonna fucking listen to and enjoy yeah and like that like it can transcend across genres and like different people like that the people that want to fucking break other people to it can listen to it. The people that want to sing, that want to just like feel emotional. Like I've, I've had people tell us like, is that song about this? And I'm like, not really, but cool. You know, if you think about that, you know, just that's it's for the people, dude. It's for the people at the end of the day, you know? But yeah, that, that is kind of like actually a really good point you just made there. Uh, I, and I think I even said this in the video I did for you guys. Uh, I, in the past, I have been very critical of, of bands that of bands that do the uh the growling or the sing or the screaming as in combination with the singing you know mm -hmm. outside outside of you know you know i've never really been critical of slipknot or anything like that but like you know it's mostly because in the in that early phase of the 2000s when i was going to fucking high school and I was the only one dressed in all black. Everybody would call me fucking screamo. I'm like, no, I'm a metalhead, you motherfucker. So uh, yeah. and it was that it, it was that extreme, like it was that extreme change up from like really awesome, brutal vocals to like whiny shit, you know, where it sounds like they're complaining about something. And I'm like, what how does that that doesn't mix? It never worked for me. But in mm -hmm. more recent years. More recent years, especially since starting the podcast, I have found you guys, uh, a band called The Suffocating Life from California, uh, a lot, of, a, ha a large handful of bands that I feel like pull, they do it better than anyone. They do it better than anyone that I've ever, that I at least as a fan have ever heard. That's and, awesome. And, Thanks. Oh, man. And yeah, so I, I, and when I was at Slipknot, I, I recently, a couple weeks ago, I went, uh, uh, I went to see Slipknot up here in Michigan. And 
I, it just like, it was one of the first shows I've been back to this year. And I was standing in this fucking gigantic crowd of like 10,000 fucking people. And when they would do, you know, their, uh, their kind of more sing-along songs, you know, wait and bleed or whatever. Uh, the, when the whole fucking crowd kicked in and just sang along with it, I was like, that's it. That's it right there. That's why it makes sense. Because a, a week or so prior to that, and don't get me wrong, this is absolutely one of my favorite bands of all time, Lamb of God. I saw them with the, with Megadeth on that tour. And and I was just comparing the two in my head. And I was like, there was no moment. There's never a moment during a Lamb of God show. You know, there's everybody else, walk with me in hell or, you know, uh, laid to rest or who gives a fuck. You know what I mean? Uh, but, yeah. But outside of that, there's it's, it's a two second, it's three words. With Slipknot, it was a whole verse, you know, and the whole yeah. fucking crowd felt it. And it was just, I don't know, I've seen both of these bands tons of times before, but like coming back after pandemic and everything, it just like hit in a different way. It and does. I was like, this is why this is necessary. Like, this is why, like, it's so awesome to have the whole fucking crowd singing along with lyrics. So. Yeah, to that point, I I, I recently kind of had that epiphany in a way. Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's funny that you say that because that and that's why I tell like everybody. I tell them a lot too. I was like, we could go super hard, super heavy, super heavy, but there has to be that chorus that just even if you don't know the uh -huh. lyrics to it, yeah, you can just boom, you can just start jumping in right then and there. And just like you said, that moment where everybody comes together and they start going, like there's we played shows where like we're, we're like I said, we're still fairly new, so we played shows where people don't know our music, but they just start singing to it anyways. Yeah, because it's just so easy to come together like that. Exactly. And we're big on like music moving everybody, man. That's what we want. Yeah. Yes. Fuck yeah. That's fantastic. I love that. I love that. Now another thing you did mention is uh, these. Uh, you kind of alluded to these these posts you're making on on Facebook that I've noticed. Uh, creepy pictures with things in them to find. Now all all I okay. All I can say is what I've seen you post. You you post like a creepy picture and you say there's something hidden in the picture that alludes to something about the upcoming release. Is there anything else you can say about that or is so, that it? So that's uh, all I don't want you I don't want you to spoil it. I don't I don't I'm not asking you to spoil anything, but I thought that was awesome. When I saw that, I was like, this is Thanks, fucking Thanks, a really cool idea. Yeah. And so I just wonder if there's any 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 anything else you could say on that. So I won't really spill the beans because I'm pretty sure they'll kick my ass if I do. Um, but just think of it in a perspective of the underworld, maybe. I guess that's the easiest without saying what it is. Just kind of look at look at the whole picture, look at the background and see. I'm talking about like everything, like how many people are in the picture, the little things off to the side. There it kind of comes together like that. So I won't really say too much of that, but if you really, really dig into it, and then once the EP comes out, you're going to be like, oh, dude, that's why. It's, it's going to be pretty cool okay. to kind of piece it all together because, yeah. you know, there's still those people out there that I know I do. Like, I would dig into the albums and try to find stuff. and That's what I like, do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude, yeah. it's so awesome because, yeah, like, dude. you get to understand the band more, you know, yeah. and then we get to have that connection with our fans. So just pay attention to everything, maybe even, like, the lower right-hand side corner of today's picture. Okay. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Just saying. And for, and, and for and for the record, this will come out in a in sometime next week. So so oh. for everybody. Uh, just keep. We'll post it again. We'll post it again next week. Links, yeah. Yeah. links to everything, Circa Arcana, in the description below. Absolutely. Uh, you. All your social medias, absolutely, will be Thank in the you. link below. Uh, so that's that's. I, I don't know. I just saw that. I had to ask about that because when I saw it, I was like, that is such a great idea especially for this time of year right like that's such a great Fuck yeah, dude. Oh, yeah dude it's like the yeah. best time of year to do the yeah. weirdest craziest creepiest most fucked yeah. up shit you could think of you know yes yes i thought that i thought that was awesome and for the record it is a very creepy fucking picture that you posted <laughs> hell yeah dude. i was like what is that <laughs> like, <ooh. laughs> yeah. um, fantastic uh now the next thing i'd like to ask you guys about honestly is uh is Something, I mean, this is just, I don't know. Uh, I'm kind of a nerd for this stuff. I love talking about gear. Uh, I am I personally, uh, I, I, I've, I've played guitar for 
probably about 10 years now. I'm, I, I love playing guitar. And, uh, but I also like, uh, my co-host on this show normally is, uh, Aaron and he's a, dr he's a drummer for a band up here in Michigan called Bog Wraith. And he has taught me so much about like drum gear and stuff. And then just from starting to do the podcast, I've learned a ton about microphones and everything. Oh, definitely. So I'm, I'm just curious, you guys is, uh, uh, favorite gear i noticed somebody in one of your videos one of the guitarists i can't remember which one uses a, a v <laughs> felipe yeah. is that felipe yeah, yeah that's that's his thing, dude. i know although, although he's he changed it a little bit because uh like this we did a show like a couple days ago and he's like i'm gonna bring my my uh we, we both use like esp ltds uh the the ec the les paul style guitars okay he's like i'm gonna bring that one dude and i told him i was like why dude and he's like well the v's cool dude but it's so fucking big so every time I'm, we we this is us all for fucking 30 45 minutes dude this is all we're doing all set and he's like dude he's like i'm fucking bumping into shit he's like i'm gonna poke someone's fucking eye out with that bitch you know yeah so he would he, he i don't think he's retired the v's because he owns like <laughs> he owns like six of them but uh yeah I, that was that, that was his fucking thing yeah he likes he has a jackson um uh, it's like yeah. a very uh prestige yeah i even oh, told him I was like dude why why are you bringing that shit on on the fucking road that shit's like three grand you know like, so fuck that it's a, from the, at least from the video, I, I you know, I, I saw a couple of videos, but from the video, I remember, uh, it's a beautiful, uh, yeah. white, uh, Randy Rhodes style Jackson. Yes. Yeah. It's and, got the reverse headstock on it. And then he loves it. Cause it's actually got like a, a hard tail on it. Cause most, most, uh, like his other ones that he has have Floyd's on them. Yeah. Like, and on the road, dude, like you pop a string or whatever, like you don't got fucking time to fucking, a fucking nightmare. try to mess with a Floyd. Like, nah, it'll take forever. Yeah. So that, yeah, it's like a one of a kind. Dude. I've never seen one like that either. Uh, I, yeah, it plays beautifully too. I just thought, I, I hope he doesn't retire it. I think it's awesome. No, no, no. I want uh, him to keep going. He just needs to right? keep his, his eyes open. Now he's never going to change it again. Fuck that. <laughs> dude, right? Right? Like, I mean, personally for me, Randy Rhodes is one of my biggest influences of all time. And then I got, I, of course, I have this poster right here of okay, Alexi Laiho. Yeah, Alexi nice. is always Alexi, here. Oh, yeah. Rest in peace, bro. For reals. Big time. Uh, he for was real. absolutely my idol. And, uh, no, I'm a big, because of him, I'm a big ESP LTD guy. Uh, nice. so that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. But what, what, uh, so shout out to Felipe. <laughs> we missed you, bro. Hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully My next boy. time you can come on and talk about the V's, but, uh, yeah, flying with bears. That's his yeah. name. Yep. Flying with bears. Flying with bears. Beautiful. Uh, but, <laughs> but what about the rest of you guys in terms of, in terms of your, uh, uh, instruments that you like to use? Uh, so Number one, um, shout out to Line 6. We're not endorsed at all, but that would be fucking dope if we could be. Love the that. The whole band, uh, both guitarists and Benny, we both, we all use, uh, I use a Line 6 Helix uh, floor or a rack, depending on how I'm feeling for that day. Uh, Felipe uses a Helix LT and Benny uses uh, an HX Stomp. So that's literally what we run front of house. That's 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 the fucking ninety percent of the fucking rig right there. Is that what you use for recording as well? I use it as an interface. Yeah. Okay. Um, am I using it for tones? No. So what we usually do is like all uh, we record everything here um, in my home studio, and then we work with a gentleman. His name is Chris Hard. Shout out to my boy Chris. Chris uh, from Risardas Productions. He's a mixer dude out of uh, Del Rio, Texas. So I send him everything that we do, and then he puts it all together. Cause yeah. we're fucking busy here, like all. And it was, I think, with the first with Esoteric, I pretty much did almost all of it, okay. um, which was our first single that we released. And it's it's time consuming. It's time consuming. And he was like, dude, he's like, you're saying you could do it now, but once like. Because all he did, I think, for that one was just the, the master, if I if I can remember right. He kind of, like, fixed up kind of the last mix and then did the master on it. So then uh, we kind of, like, came to agreement. He's like, dude, he's like, I'll take I'll take a lot of that off your load. He's like, record it, send it to us. So we just kind of, like, talk it over. And he does a lot. He does all the legwork. He'll do the final mix and the master. And uh, But we communicate a lot in regards to, uh, like, tonality and whatever. And I know, like, the majority of it is uh neural dsp uh plugins that's what we're using for like for the tower i think it's all um nolly archetype nolly and uh i think plenty for the fucking uh leads 
um badass badass shits i just like i like helix a little more um i've used axe effects um which is pretty dope too um uh, the quad cortex looks badass too but um like with our band dude we use uh like 90 percent of the songs have like backing tracks and all kinds of stuff and the one thing like this is why i tell people why the helix is better than anything else so the helix can act actually controls like our live set i have it connected to like the computer through a little fucking midi bluetooth thing and if we need to restart the song i press a button on the helix and it'll restart the song restart the click track restart the synths all of that we can stop the songs we can jump between songs if we need to where like otherwise than that it would have to be like the laptop next to frank which some stages dude are like you're in a fucking rincon or a little corner you know a fucking room <laughs> to do that shit or what we used to do a long time ago would be like we would set up the set from start to finish you press play and it just fucking goes and that kind of sucks because it doesn't give you time to breathe. like fuck around breathe <laughs> yeah. you know or if you fuck up it doesn't let you restart so right. that's the one cool thing about the helix dude, is that it's the only modeler at least that i'm i'm aware of that can do that that you can it actually works like a fucking computer which is weird that's awesome yeah fantastic uh everybody else though what, uh your gear what's uh what's your favorite uh stuff to to, to use man i just fucking play bass that's it i don't <laughs> i don't focus on the model i don't focus i just play as long as i i have a tone that's it i think right now i'm using the schecter omen elite oh um, i love schecter yes yeah that's a badass bass dude i yeah. like it so but overall i mean yeah before uh, I was, is it a five string yes five string. okay okay five string is life bro on a yeah. bass yes. Yeah. It is. Yeah, I, I will tell you one thing. I wish I would have kept my Warwick Corvette. Um, that thing was a beast, especially for recording. But it sucked when you were playing live because that sucker is heavy, heavy as fuck. I mean, okay, you can't move around unless you, you know, you're gonna do some crazy fucking lifting on your fucking shoulders. But you yeah. know, I, I love where I'm at right now. Definitely, that's what yeah. I'm rocking. Hell yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, any particular like heads or symbols or anything? Yeah, so I'm actually using a five piece black Tama kit. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so beautiful. Actually, Philippe is the one who gifted it to me. Oh, it looks gorgeous. Yeah. So, and uh, for symbols, I'm using a, a, um, a lip. Oh, I forgot what they're called. Pasty, no? Huh? Is it pasty? No, no. Uh, oh. They're Minos, actually. Oh, Minos. Yeah, Minos. Minos Dark Crashes. Ooh, with some oh. in China. So. Okay. So yeah, it's everything. Uh, and what's heads the, or Evans or Remos? Right now they're Remos. I was using Evans, Evans but heads. one broke, so I was like, okay, I'll use Remo. <laughs> but fair enough, fair enough. I just, you know, that's something I love. I love to hear about. So fuck yeah, I always dude. like to ask about that. I'm uh, a fucking little gearhead. So if you yeah, have yeah. questions, let me know, dude. Oh <laughs> yeah, big time, big time. I've I've really, especially during pandemic, I've really gotten back into all the gear stuff. So. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I always like asking about that. But, uh, okay, yeah. Uh, one more thing before we kind of like start to wrap things up. Uh, now, in terms of since pandemic, uh, playing and attending shows as a fan, uh, I know you guys have played a few shows. Have you attended any as a fan in and is it different for you as a band on stage or as a fan in the crowd individually? Uh, does does anything feel different? Has 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 it uh, affected any, th that stuff in any way? So it's funny that you said that you went to Slipknot because I'm going to go watch Slipknot um, in about a week or two. Shout out to Slipknot. They're on me. It sounds um, so good, dude. My favorite band of all time. And I can tell you right now, being a fan there, I will not be giving one fuck about anyone being around me i'm gonna jam out dude so i don't yeah. care like that's just my yeah. perspective that's we're what it's all been like up here we're all vaccinated all right Same. so uh yeah fuck yeah dude good 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 job fuck yeah um i have not gone to a fucking so like outside of the band like especially working in healthcare i try to fucking like still stay away yes. do my own thing um but yeah like being a one thing I've noticed, uh, like w when we played shows, is like people are ready for it. People are ready to come back. People are hitting harder um, than 
than way before. Like people yeah, are fucking yeah. enjoying it, enjoying it, actually enjoying it, every bit of it. Um, I have we I have not gone to have you gone to a concert? Have you oh, yeah, I've only not, been to like a friend's, you know, a little like a local show. thing? Yeah, like a local thing. I have not nothing nothing really big, big has come. You you went yeah, to one, right? You yeah, went to Mega Death. Mega Death, mm-hmm. Lamb of God. Uh that was the show that I went to last and it was it was fucking badass. You know, Mike, I've always loved Mega Death more mm-hmm. than Metallica, you know. I, Me I'm, too. You know, I I love that groove. You know, I can't I can't do the seven minute solos, um, just in and out quick. But that was a that was a pretty badass show. Like Megadeth brought it with everything. Oh, oh yeah, they they absolutely killed it. It had been many years since I had gotten to see Megadeth, and they're they're one of my favorite bands. Yeah, I've I've always been way more Megadeth fan than Metallica, and to see them with Lamb of God, Trivium, and Hatebreed, which is a band that I fucking love. Uh, it was special. It was uh, that was a special tour in general, and you know it was canceled last year. It came back this year, and we got to see it, and that's awesome. Uh, yeah. It was it was a great tour. Definitely, yeah. yeah. That that too has been like a crazy thing too. Like we try to uh, keep our shows pretty short. Like what we've been doing is maybe like a show or two every month. Um, not trying to do anything too too crazy because the last thing we need is for anyone to get like a reoccurrent infection or anything like that. So, um, so you like you, it's different, dude. It kind of it sucks, but like we, I mean, we we're taking the risk and uh, you know we do it for the fans. You know, like we're not gonna be like douchebags either and be like, don't talk to me or whatever. You know, we've yeah. all taken the right precautions. Like I said, we're all vaccinated. Uh, and we go have a killer fucking time. We meet with people. We talk with people after shows. And like I said, we try to keep it small. Because what I've noticed, like the trend, I'm sure you've seen it too with other bands, is like they go on these one week, two week tours, and they can't even finish them because someone in the camp fucking gets the sniffles and, and gets a recurrent infection, and then everything gets canceled or everything gets fucked up at that point. Um, so just to avoid that, we keep it short and simple. A couple weekend runs here and there. Um, and hopefully 2022, if everybody can get their shit together, we can fucking start. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we can exactly. fucking do something a little better. Yeah, a little longer. I can definitely, I can definitely at least say if you guys ever had the chance to make it up here to Michigan, uh, oh. A, there's no way I would ever miss it. And B, yeah. uh, we're ready for you. Uh, yeah. the, the venues, okay. the venues up here are, yeah, it's like, you know, when, now granted, I, I haven't. Oh, wait, no, I, I did go to one show. So on October 5th is when Live Nation announced that every Live Nation venue would require uh, proof of vaccination or yeah. what, you know, or whatever. COVID test, yeah. Na- yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, now, that's that's not every venue, of course. No. Uh, it's most of the big ones, but it's not both. most of the big yeah. ones. Yeah. Um, 80, 80%, 85 so I did go to I did go see Dahlia and Carnifex that up from the sewers oh, tour. Fuck yeah! Uh, That's cool. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. Fuck yeah! Uh, that was the first one that they like made me like show anything or whatever. Yeah. You know, but then you show it. You know, at every show you've ever been to, you got to show them your ID and get the wristband. So it's just an extra thing to show, and then you walk yeah. in and it's like a normal fucking concert. It's it's, yep. like, it's totally normal. So, it, yep. yeah, it's just awesome. It's just a really, it's yeah. Like after having it all ripped away from us, yep. To, to go back and actually be able to feel normal again is is oh man, it's, it's wonderful. It's yeah, crazy. It yeah, it's awesome, man. Really yeah, makes yeah. you appreciate that shit, you know? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. It oh in oh, on a level, dude. <laughs> appreciate it on a different level than we yes. ever had. And we already as I feel as metalheads appreciate it on a different level than everybody exactly. else. Exactly. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, dude, for real. Yeah. Definitely. So just fantastic. But, uh, but all right, um, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, now, we are, of course, here uh, right now. This will obviously come out in a few days, but we are sitting here one week away right now from Halloween night. All Hallows' Eve. And it's one of my favorite times of the year. Yo, Fuck, same, yeah. dude. Same. It's the only time that matters. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I, I do want to talk to you about some spooky stuff. Um, in terms, and this is this is, I'm actually gen. I'm really interested to know this one. Uh, what are there any 
heavy metal songs that you like particularly uh, particularly associate with Halloween time or uh, that you actually find creepy because, you know, uh, at least in my opinion, the first metal band in big quotes there, uh, Black Sabbath. And part of the reason for that is because their, I, I can't remember right now if it was their rehearsal space or their studio was like on the same block or just around the corner from a movie theater in England at the time. And they, they made the observation that every time there was a horror film, the line would be around the corner. So they were like, oh, well, let's try to scare people with music. Thus born Black Sabbath, the first album, and then from that, the rest of heavy metal. So it was originally born to scare people with music in a way. So I'm wondering... Do you guys have any any songs that make you, that that creep you out that that you like to put on at Halloween time or anything like that? Well, we 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 really try to push the limits with being creepy all the yeah. time, dude. So, like, nice. to be honest with you, it's really hard it's for me to be like, "Oh, that was creepy," yeah, because I am constantly every single time that, trying to push that boundary. <laughs> like that that is that. the thing. That is the thing is for people like us, it's extra hard to creep us out right yeah yeah definitely, yeah definitely yeah so 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 yeah maybe i should find a way to rephrase that but like just something that like you that sticks out to you i guess as like oh maybe like to someone who doesn't listen to metal or whatever this would be extra creepy for me uh like you know cradle of filth their cover of iron maiden's hallow be thy name that intro part is fucking terrifying mm -hmm. if you've ever heard that uh, but yeah, anything like that for you guys at all? Um, I would say if I had to choose one, if it had to come down to me, it would be like the artist murder, the horror chainsaw. Like that Ooh, first EP, that first EP, that first time I heard it, dude, yeah, I was like, that shit is fucking yeah. I heard like this is a little violent, and I yeah, I that's it. a good one. <laughs> that's like, a good yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing too. Is like it's when we hear something that creeps us out, we go, oh, we like this. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. like absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of tricky, dude. I don't know. I know, like, uh, maybe what, what the first time I kind of heard, uh, what album is it? Antichrist Superstar oh. by, by Marilyn Manson. Holy shit, if you listen to that bitch, like, front to back, uh, yeah, dude, that's some, yeah, In the Dark on Halloween. In the Dark? Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, you'll see some shit. With, yeah. a vanilla, with a vanilla candle, <laughs> with the vanilla candle <laughs> burning in the back, yeah, beating the wild loop, annoyed to be found. Yeah, I did. Yeah, um, yeah, that there's one. some there's some weird shit in that, and that, and even like that whole um the way they did that that album, you could hear it because I, I remember I read into it like they went through like days or weeks of like sleep deprivation and like crazy drug trips and shit like that oh. in order to to push themselves psychologically to the limit to record that shit. Um, and you can kind of, it kind of, it, 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 once you, once I read that shit and then you listen to it front and back, not, not just like the beautiful people, you know what I mean? Like yeah. front and back, you're like, what the fuck? And the, and the whole album is an actual concept album about like the antichrist, about the, the son of the devil coming up to kill people and shit that's fucking cool you know <laughs> yeah. i like that shit that animal. shit's cool man and then people look at us like what the fuck's wrong with y'all man yeah like, right. like that. everything <laughs> yeah, probably yeah everything's where the weird was <laughs> yeah fuck it you know so this is our fucking holiday to yeah let dude, it, to we, let yeah we yeah. allow it yeah oh yeah dude absolutely oh, Any yeah. do you guys anything um like creepy songs, I would say, and I'm looking it up on my phone because I always forget, but it's uh, uh, Nine Inch Nails from a pretty hate machine called Sanctified. Yeah. Oh, that album, yeah. It's, yeah. I like it, that album. And it, like, there's a part where he talks about uh, about the devil. And I remember when I, when I, I used to, when I was in high school, I used to sleep with my headphones on. And when that song came out, that whole night I had this weird dream of this little demon, little black demon with red eyes, but six arms. And I remember I picked like, it up what the and fuck, like, it bit my fucking hand like right here. And I remember waking up like during that and like I looked at my hand, I was freaked out and I thought it ran under the fucking bed. But like 
I realized I had my headphones on, so I was like, okay, I'm not going to sleep the fucking music on anymore. Right. That shit was fucking weird. Well, but we need to draw like, that. Yeah. Does okay. anyone have like a so, artist we could get a hold of? <laughs> yeah. Honestly, In case yeah. you're looking for spoilers in the upcoming album, we're using that. <laughs> yeah. sure. I was going to see that with six arms dope. biting Benny's fucking hand yeah, in yeah, the dude, middle. That little, that little fucking was fucking creepy, but I mean, I remember it like it, it stayed in my fucking head, and it's still to this day like. When I'm in the dark, and I love the dark, I, I hate sleeping with lights on, but, you know, when it's I'm going to the, the fucking restroom or whatever in the dark, and I fucking, I'm looking around, I'm like, what the fuck is going to jump out at me? Like, I always feel like those fucking red eyes are just going to glow at me at any fucking moment. Pop up and bite you in the I'm dick, fucking, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to, like, piss all over the wall, and my fiance is just going to be like, what the fuck happened? You know? That's hot. Yeah, that, that's definitely future artwork and at least a concept track. Hey, for yeah, sure. Fuck yeah, for <laughs> sure. That's that's material yeah. right there. That's that's all. Awesome. That's wild. That's wild. How about you, Frank? You got any yeah. scary ass fucking songs or anything that? I mean, not really. I mean, creeps yeah. you out at all? Itsy yeah. bitsy Momo. little spider. We got Momo. Do we like all that fucking yeah. dark shit, dude? The other day, I swear I summoned a fucking demon in this fucking room. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, then we'll just dive in. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh shit. So like uh I hope I hope we will we will make our fucking way up upstate to fucking Michigan, man, oh. so we can play a show with y'all. So we like we like to fucking take people by under the rug and like we have this whole persona that we're like all these like badasses and all this other bullshit, but then we like to have fun with it, right? Yeah. So our main thing has been for like live shows or like some of the live shows, not all of them, but we like to come out to like an intro. We change it up all the fucking time. So come see us because no show's the fucking same, right? We've awesome. come out to uh M main thing we like to walk out to is like dumb shit dumb, <laughs> dumb <laughs> 80s pop songs that's the shit that we like to fucking come out to so the other day for these san antonio shows we we're like man well it's the season we need to do something cool you know so everybody was like man we're gonna walk out to like an 80s song we picked the 80s song which i'm not gonna mention because that's not part of the Because it might happen again. Because it might happen again. You know, I don't want to ruin it for people. So Fair I picked enough. the 80s song, but I was like, you know what? Let's spook it up a little bit. You know, let's change up the shit a little bit. So I'm here sitting in the studio. I'm working on some shit. So I, I go online, start looking up some crazy shit. And I, I downloaded like some crazy, like spooky fucking sounds. I downloaded like the like a the voice of like a woman screaming like over the phone, like, like she's being murdered or some shit, you know, it's crazy shit. Then I'm like, you know what? Let's fucking up the ante. Why not? So I started looking up like um, how to like summon a demon, prayers to summon a demon, seances. Oh, I hope the FBI never fucking goes through my fucking search history. Bro. <laughs> I swear to God, they're going to be like, what the fuck? You know, looking up weird ass shit, you know? So I actually found um, like a video of like uh, different prayers that actual like, uh, like Satanists like to use. Mm -hmm. um to summon satan to their fucking home abode you know what i mean um and it was like backwards and shit and this guy had been like dude we need something it's like a, a weird version of the our father but anyways the video is like eight minutes long it's all backwards so you don't even know what the fuck it is right and there was a certain portion that i really liked it's just like blah, 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 whatever the fuck right all demonic and shit so i take that piece right and i flip the audio in my daw just to listen to it it turns out to be like a dark version of the Our Father. And I was like, hey, this is cool. You know, so I'm putting it there. I set it up. It gets all spooky. It goes spooky and then into the 80s song. So it's fucking hilarious as fuck, you know, way to fucking twist it around, right? Listening to it, listening to it, listening to it over and over, trying to balance the levels, make sure everything is right. Out of nowhere, um, the volume on my monitors die. My phone dies. I'm looking, I'm like, what the fuck just happened, right? Trying to play the track, right? And I look and all the meters on my fucking, in my DAW are skyrocketed. Looks like all like, like the, like the files are corrupt or something. Um, I do have like a safety mechanism on my, on my monitors where like, if it gets to a certain decibel, it'll cut out to prevent like hearing loss. Yeah. Um, so I look at the master meter to see like, what the fuck happened on the master meter? And the, the audio had actually clipped 
at 666 decibels. Shut the fuck. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah cool. dude. And he I, fucking told me that and I was like, I'm on my way over right now. That's yeah. fucking awesome, dude. I started, <laughs> yeah. laughing. I started laughing. I was like, man, this is this is trippy, man. Metal. Fuck. Yeah, fuck Metal. it. Dude. Like Felipe says, yeah. yeah. Yeah, dude, that was the weirdest fucking shit after that. I was like, holy we, fuck. We also have like like uh pictures of some shows in Tucson where there's like crazy faces that you can see in the background of so just we're like we're like going like this with the audience taking pictures i look back and there's like three different pictures have like a different type of demon that you can see in it and it's like real because like we don't know each anything. photo is different it's yeah. weird each photo look, like one looks like a demonic clown one like has like a weird face the other one it was like a shadow man with the top hat i was like mm -hmm. what like but like and those people know. weren't there at that show so, so. pretty much to like break it down <laughs> We don't know what the fuck we're doing, but it's cool. <laughs> Metal, dude. Yeah, yeah. Dude. it wasn't. It wasn't a costume show either, so I don't know. Like, there was only one person dressed up. Yeah. So. Wow. Yeah. That's. That's actually really fascinating. I, I, you know, this is um, it's something I like to go into, especially every time I have someone on the show for the first time. Because, you know, outside of heavy metal, another big passion of mine is the paranormal. I go to a lot of, yes. I go to a lot of places, uh, uh, yes. uh, yes. abandoned, abandoned, whatever. You know, a lot of the places that you see on, like, the whatever ghost hunting show you may or may not watch, uh, a lot of those places you can, like, buy a ticket and get locked in overnight. And I've done all but one that re it just recently this year became available in Michigan, but I've done all but one in Michigan, one outside. So I actively go to these places and, and look for stuff like that. So I always, and you guys definitely already gave me some, but I'm curious <laughs> if you have any more, uh, do, do any of you have experiences in, in your life outside of the ones you just shared that you would describe as paranormal and i'm not just including ghosts in that i'm including cryptids and like ufos and stuff like that have any of you ever had any kind of experience like that yeah so i was i was actually um hunting out with a cut with a team here in el paso 915 paranormal shout out um oh, but we would get yeah. locked into the um the soto hotel every friday um, so I don't know if you've heard of this at the whole time. Yes, I have. Um, so we get locked down there, dude. And I've heard, um, like demons. I had Satan whispered into my ear, my Bible verse right here. I got a huge scratch running down my arm. I've seen a girl get scratched right in front of me. Um, I've seen myself as a demon dude with like no eyes and like black. I've seen figures, bro. I love the paranormal dude. Um, I constantly go and try to search for all this shit. Um, but yeah, dude, I've had a bunch of crazy shit happen to me to where like, I start like um, down in the Soto. I mean, and, and it's funny cause there's hardly any residents that live there anymore cause the building's kind of damaged. Mm -hmm. um, but it is for sale in case you want to buy it. If I had money, I would um but uh yeah so there's hardly anyone there so that's not really a lot of like noise that can happen while you're doing like ele electronic voice phenomena or anything um so the voices you do catch are pretty creepy and it, if you hang around there long enough it actually start using your voice to mimic off like a spirit box or to talk to people yeah and it's followed me home a couple of times too like my i went to go visit my parents and i gotta show you these guys but um she actually has a um a little file um, from Snapchat where my voice comes out and it tells the dog to sit down and be quiet. But I was living in Colorado. So it's pretty crazy, dude. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to use Ooh. it. Yeah, dude. <laughs> sit down. <laughs> yeah. That's sit why down, I stay home. Yeah. Very. That's the, yeah, the, the, the mimicking stuff is extra creepy. That's a, that's, yeah, that's, that's some that's, demon stuff, dude. Yes. Yes. Anybody, anybody else? Um. Uh, I have, like, this weird, like, it's not paranormal, but it's, like, like, what, what's it called? Like, extra... Like, extra projecting? The, like, the space shit. Extraterrestrial. Extra <laughs> In the spacey space. star stuff. Space <laughs> uh, this, was, this is, like, the most weirdest <laughs> thing you'll ever hear. So, my mom and I were driving from, like, this part of town, and we were driving on the highway, and I had looked up, it was, like, dark. You can see a bunch of stars and like out of nowhere you just see like what you think it would be like a random shooting star but it wasn't it was like it it literally looks like a sperm okay. <laughs> like okay like yeah. the, the tail was waggling <laughs> like that yeah, like super fast like straight out of like 
Like it was a, it was like a soup, like a star or something like that. I don't know. Star what sperm. Star <laughs> sperm, bro. Like the tail was like this, like, and I was like, what the fuck is that? And my mom, like, I, I told her, did you see that? And she's like, yeah, like I saw that. I was like, what the fuck is that? You know? <laughs> and then it flew into someone's butthole. <laughs> <laughs> you know, look, ben was right there. And Ben was right there. <laughs> Oh no, dude. Uh, no, that that is weird though. That is weird yeah, though. Because is weird. because there's nothing uh there's nothing that I know of naturally occurring that would do that would make the waves in yeah. in yeah. the I'll like I, really we've all seen tons of shooting stars and comments in, in medias. Yeah. I, I've I've seen tons of them in my life. Never have I seen anything the do wave. A wave. That's that that's is bizarre. Weird. That's weird. That is bizarre. For sure. That's crazy, man. It is. Ben? Uh, you know, you saw Santa. I did see Santa one time. Um, that was back in 1994. Santa sighting documentary <laughs> here. <laughs> I was crying this actually, but uh, oh, no, I did, was, uh, I did uh I did back in uh when I was going to college, when I was trying to be smart. Um at UTEP here, our university, there was this building that was actually, they say it's haunted. I'm not too sure. Like, I just remember I was on a date with a girl and this was back when we had uh, the brick cell phone. So I had a Nokia and, you know, nice. you get, you know, some crazy weird shit with that shit. But anyways, I had taken her down to that building. We we're supposed to go explore it. And next thing you know, like I'm getting a bunch of text messages from her, but her phone was in my car. And she was right next to me. And we didn't really get that far away from the, the no, car. That's creepy. But it was a, like, it kept telling me, like, hey, what are you doing? Where are you going? Like, as soon as we started turning back around, it's like, come back to me. Come back. Come back. And that's all I got throughout those whole text chills. messages were like, come back, come back, come back. But she was looking at the phone the same way, too. As soon as we got to the car, she opens up her phone. But there are no stories. messages from her to me. You know what I mean? What the fuck? So, Whatever was outside of that building was taking control of my phone, take, sending those messages. So that to me was the creepiest shit ever. And now I'm getting fucking chills. <laughs> yeah, that gave me fucking chills. Shit, that was dude. Creepiest shit that I went through. The fucking ghost was in your DMs, dude. Yeah, for real. Like, <laughs> it didn't even take me out to fucking dinner. What the fuck? <laughs> That's I mean, creepy, bro. I mean, I mean, I, I, I can honestly say I, I actively go out in search of this kind of stuff. I watch all the shows, all the YouTubes that I can find about anything having to do with this stuff that I think is in, in any way credible, all the podcasts, whatever. I don't think I've ever heard anyone tell it, it a story was... like that before. That's, that's fucking creepy, dude. Yeah, that's it's creepy, creepy as fuck. Well. Good like, job, Ben. Seriously, like, <laughs> like, honestly, like, the shit that I went through, even though I'm fucking, like, old as a fucking dinosaur, like, I've been through some fucking crazy shit. I don't talk about it with anybody <laughs> because sometimes I don't like to re relive these moments. And so, but, you know, now that we're in the, the spirit of talking about this shit, well, you guys hear it now. Well, I'm, 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 I'm glad you shared at least that one with us. Thank you. Absolutely. I appreciate That's that. Good. That is a good, that is a really good one. Uh, yeah, no, you know, that's it's the kind of thing for me where, you know, you know, it's behind the camera right now, so you guys can't see it, but like I always have the X Files I want to believe poster up in the studio. Uh, because that's what it is for me in a lot of ways. It's like I I definitely have had some experiences, uh, but I'm 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 still searching for that one experience where I'm like, oh my god, I actually saw something. You know, mm. like uh, real proof in front of my eyes for the first time. Because I'm definitely, I definitely come at it at way more of like a extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence standpoint. You know, it's, I love the stories, don't get me wrong, but if you can't prove it, it's yeah. just a story. Yeah, you kind of got to experience it on your own terms to be able yeah. to like really, really like understand like, oh fuck, that shit was, that shit just did happen. Yeah, yeah. to me, it's like, out of like the years that I've been doing it. And the one time it happened to me where, cause I didn't believe in the paranormal. When it happened to me, I was like, bro, that was, there's no way to explain that. Like if there's real evil to the places that you're going, like you won't have to find it, bro. It will find you. I promise you that. Yeah. I've, I've, I used to work at a nursing home. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm a nursing assistant. So 
I remember one time there was this resident that I used to take care of and he passed away. And this was actually during the COVID pandemic. I remember getting home and when I opened the door, the hallway light was on, the girls were asleep. And the, like, I remember hearing a voice going, hello. And it was a male's voice. And it was like, it sounded exactly like the gentleman that passed away. Dang. So like, I, I looked in every room because I was like, what the fuck is there? Why is there a male in my fucking house? Like, I was about to lose my shit. But knowing, like, understanding that there was no other man in the house was the fucking craziest, weirdest thing to me. Like, no. how could you say hello to me? Like, you know, he probably followed me and he was like, hey, buddy, what's up? You know, so. Crazy. That too, yeah. That I think is... working, in, working in healthcare, you really see, like, yeah, they a, lot of, a lot of, yeah, it's weird, man. Have you ever yeah. seen anything working in any of the hospitals you've worked in? The craziest thing that happened to me one time, and I really didn't like trip about it, go like oh, whatever, right? So I had a patient who uh he was kind of a dumbass. Rest in peace. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna fuck it, whatever, dude. So this guy, young, he was a couple years older than me. Um, <laughs> his girlfriend left him, he got very sad and he tried to drink a bottle of bleach. Okay. Now, bleach is not a very nice chemical to introduce into the human body. It's very corrosive. So it literally tore, yeah. it literally eroded everything inside of him. Um, we had him uh, connected through, uh, he had uh, something called TPN, which is like uh, nutrition through the vein, pretty much. Okay. And, and he was suicidal. So uh, we got up, we were walking through the, through the ward and we we're having a conversation. And he was asking me, you know what? Uh, the doctors told me like, I can stay on this. For maybe about another couple of years, uh, it's it's not it doesn't it will not keep you alive. It cannot sustain you nutritionally. Eventually, the liver will take its toll and fail. So he was like, "I could stay on it for a couple of years, but honestly, like, how long do you think it'll take for me to die?" And I was like, "We were having this conversation all day, and I was trying to explain to him physiologically and pathophysiologically the process that he would have to go through, which was not going to be an easy process." Mm -hmm. So at the end of the shift, right, um, I'm giving report. And um, I'm in like this, uh, in this little room, giving a report to another nurse. And one of my nursing assistants comes in screaming and she's like, Johnny, Johnny, something's going on in that patient's room. Come quick, quick, quick. I was like, what's going on? So I get up, go into the room, right? So at seven o'clock at night, because I work 12 hour shifts, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., right? So it's already dark. I walk into the room, all the lights are off. Hospital bed is all the way up. The TV that was in the corner was on with static playing and the IV pump was making this weird error sound that I had never seen. And I look in and I'm like, what the hell happened in here? And the patient's sitting in the corner, right? And he's got like a fucking little blanket over his head like this. And he goes, era el diablo, which is Spanish for, it was the devil. And I just looked at him and I was like, bro, shut the fuck up. You're gonna scare the <laughs> girl, you know? <laughs> like, Turn on the lights, let's get this shit on the road, you know? And it was weird, man. But uh, after that, like, uh, I think a couple of days after that, he passed away. And it was like one of the weirdest things. Whenever I came back to think about that moment, I was like, I feel like maybe someone actually came back. He was at, people say like, when it comes to that type of shit, like the, the like demons and all that type of shit. Like if, if you're looking to end it and you're looking for it, they'll, they'll gladly come and take it. Yeah. And I don't know if that's what happened that a couple nights later. I don't know if that was like his warning. But a couple of days later, that gentleman passed in his sleep. Wow. That, that I, I, I don't know if I would have been as cool as you walking into that room. <laughs> I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? It was like, I was like, man, like, come on, bro. Like, as soon as I see the static on the TV, I'm gonna be like, what the fuck yeah. is going on here? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. This, this happened when I was like, Brand new nurse, bro. And I was just trying to get home. I was fucking tired. I was like, I don't have time to fucking deal with this bullshit. I'm bro, shut up, turn the lights on, and get in bed, man. Climb up that motherfucker. I don't know. <laughs> it's it's actually really fucking kind of weird. Uh, 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 that 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 Be Ben, right? Ben on base, yes, yes. That Ben that uh brought that up specifically, and that led to that because earlier today. I was listening to a uh, a different uh, paranormal podcast, but in the whole podcast specifically, uh, had it's shout out. It's called Monsters Among Us. If you guys have never heard right. it, check it out. It's a great podcast. Uh, 
the episode I was listening to earlier today was literally nothing but call-ins of people in in the medical field um, talking about par- their paranormal experiences they've had in hospitals and while working in the medical field. So the fact that you two just at the ready had stories like that is kind of yeah. trippy to me. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah, you see some crazy shit, especially in the nursing home. I mean, yeah. those those older people – their young selves come back to life and and i think that's the even weirder fucking thing uh i do remember this one last story for me because i need to use a restroom but uh i was walking through the hallways i i worked the the mid the night shift so i always encountered a whole lot of weird fucking things i remember this resident walking by i they always had curtains because there was two to a room so they had curtains splitting off you can see under the curtains whatever I was walking and I remember seeing some white shoes shuffling uh, behind one of the curtains. And I remember that resident used to have a, a roommate that used to shuffle through her shit. So I remember that resident because she was a nosy, a nosy woman. And she always nosy wore me. those white shoes. They were white as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, like just seeing that shit. Colgate white. Just seeing how, <laughs> how white they were just shuffling by this woman's bed, like back and forth, like just tripping me out. So I went back to go look and there was nobody there, but the woman just staring up into the light. Oh, like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> that shit tripped me out too. That's so. Yeah. If you ever get to work and shit like that, you should really love it. I recommend it. That's inter- that's that's fascinating. That's uh, yeah, I you know, that, that's why I keep going on all these investigations. It's just it's I, it's something I can't like. Okay, so let's let's get to the point where we we have an experience like this and we can confirm for ourselves as individuals. Okay, ghosts are real, but then it's like, what the hell are they? You yeah. know what I mean? Like uh, it's like, I, what are they? You know, it's I don't know. Like it's it's Gensai. so it's it's just constantly fascinating. It's something, you know. I I grew up on horror movies and Ghostbusters and and stuff like that. So like it's always something that's fast. When when I was a kid, my mom would take me to the library. Me and my sister, uh, to the library. You know, for an afternoon or whatever. I would always jump straight to all the books about ghosts or Loch Ness monster or Bigfoot or. Or whatever, and that, that's just always been the thing that interests me. And uh, that is see actually physically seeing white shoes underneath a curtain, and then you look and there's nothing there. I've that's that's the kind of that's the kind of thing I'm hoping to happen to me one day. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, think about it too. Like the look in the woman's eyes, like the actual resident that was yes. there, like. She must have fucking freaked out too, because she her eyes her eyes were wide open. Like she's like, "Fuck, death's here for yeah, me like, now." Fuck. But, but <laughs> the thing with this woman, I mean, she held on for like years. You know, I thought oh, she was wow. gonna pass away soon, but no, hell no, dude. She she lasted quite a quite a bit, like like maybe four or five years more, which is uh, pretty intense for seeing some shit like that. I don't know. I probably would have died the next day. <laughs> right. That's yeah. it, bro. So. I need the restroom. Go for it, bro. Go yeah. for it. You There's it, plenty of us here, man. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I, it, it might just be the kind of thing where once you're at a certain point, you know, whatever whatever it is that... Because this is it's kind of a made-up word, but the veil, if you will, in big quotes right there, you know, maybe it's just a little bit thinner at a certain yeah. point in life. Yeah. And whatever that thing is... Uh, maybe there's just a little bit more access at a certain point uh, to certain things because, because that is something that you, that, uh, that we alluded to earlier, where it's like, if you look for it, or if you, if you put it out into the universe, it's more likely to come to you. To come find the second you. time we've said that today, dude. And that's true, that's true man. And, and I mean, I, well, what I, what I will say is that I put it out into the universe a lot and I still <laughs> haven't, really had i've had some i've had some good experiences but i haven't had the one that makes me go holy shit this is real uh and especially when it comes to there, there's a there's a piece of folklore up here in michigan you guys might have it down there in texas as well um where you know it's we, everybody has bigfoot but uh there's a thing called the dog man 
and it's uh very it's basically a werewolf that never turns into a human so like it's just always that monster and it's a it's really big up here in like the midwest and stuff there's been a lot of reported sightings going all the way back to early french settlers and things like that but a lot, there's a lot of connection to uh native americans and skinwalkers and things like that a lot of people associate it with that as well and i mean what i'll say is when it comes to native american stuff like as a go like as an amateur like ghost hunter or whatever native american stuff is shit i will not fuck with like that's absolutely dude never yeah mm -mm. there seems to be no way, something dude. absolutely not there seems to be something way more real in terms of paranormal about that stuff than like anything else than anything else I've seen outside of like YouTube videos from like, from like fucking middle of nowhere, Russia or yeah, like yeah, the yeah. middle East, you know, uh -huh. in, in literally ancient places, places that have buildings that have been there longer than the United States has been a country. A country yeah. You know what I mean? So, but it's the native Americans who have been here longer than the United States was a country. And their stuff seems to be, seems to have something real to it in a way. Yeah. Dude. yeah. Something going on there. And, but, but, but a lot of them will also say, if you talk about the skinwalker or the dog man a lot, then it will make itself known. And I've been talking about it and looking for it for years and I still haven't seen it. So, you know, there is that kind of, yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure if the, maybe, maybe it's just different people. Maybe it's just different people have different ability to manifest things through intention or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, but all this stuff absolutely fascinates me. And it, your stories right there were actually some of the best. Not, I, I, I ask every metal band I have on here about that. And you would think, you would think every metal band is like, yeah, I'm super into horror and stuff like that. It's totally, it's totally, it, as it turns out, in my experience, it's totally 50-50. It's like 50% of them like, no, never had anything. And then 50% are like, I can't wait to tell you about this. You know what I mean? Let me show you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> It's, fuck yeah dude it's wild it's wild but uh i have definitely kept you guys for i got one more question for you guys and this is just Go a fun it. just a fun little halloween question um uh i have personally during this last month uh really kind of like rediscovered the horror genre in a big bad way in film and tv and uh like i said earlier i i i, re I literally realized like back in august I was like, I love Rob Zombie. And I realized I'd never seen all of his movies. So I started going through those. And I, I, I've just really taken, a re, reignited a passion for horror in, in movie and film. So I'm curious, is there, are there any particular horror movies that you guys like to watch during this time of year or what your favorite ones are? TV shows even? Like I'm a giant fan of American Horror Story or more recently, um... Midnight Mass on Netflix was brilliant. Uh, you know, is, is there anything anything you guys uh, particularly get into this time of year? Dude, so for me, I'm a huge, huge Halloween fan. Like, Michael Myers. I dress, up, I dress up as Michael Myers. As a matter of fact, I did it yesterday. And I will literally be that asshole that just walks around the street. I don't have kids. I don't need to be out there. But I'll do it just to make you have a hard time, dude. Like, I'll stand outside of your house. I'll oh, scare I you for no reason. Just because I'm a dick like that. No. But Halloween, dude, I want to say I watched all of them at least like eight times now. And Halloween Kills was fucking tits, dude. It was the best thing I've ever seen. But that's mine. I don't know what they do. Uh, re real quick side note. Where do you rank Rob Zombie's Halloween 1 in your um, ranking? So, okay. So, dude. So, <laughs> picture this, dude, right? So, when Rob Zombie's Halloween came out, I really, really liked it. I thought it was super dope. I love it. Um, I loved it a lot, but then Halloween Kills came out. Well, I'm sorry. Um, wait, Halloween wait. came out. Yeah, I, I think they just called that. The, the last yeah, that one. 2018. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh, hell no, dude. Like, none of them have shit on this one. And then this one came out, and I don't even know how to fucking feel about it. It was so brutal, dude. But Halloween right. by Rob Zombie was pretty dope because it was more 
creepy. It was creepy. It was more realistic to like, I, you know, I, I just really like how they showed his origin story. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and we was, don't, we, we don't have an origin story about uh, Freddy Krueger. We, I mean, we kind of have kinda. one. We do have one about Jason, I guess. The If you go back yeah. to the very first Friday the 13th, that is, he's, the he's barely even in it. He doesn't even have the, the hockey mask in that one. Yeah, exactly. So, but I, for me at the time, I was in high school when that came out and I was like the one kid in my high school that wore heavy metal t-shirts and had long blonde hair. So like, Everybody was like, "Oh, you're little Michael!" Like the whole. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, I guess, yeah, but I, but that. I, I love, I love that, I love that first one and the first one, like, uh, the one before Halloween Kills. I thought, I think those two, th- those two in the original for me are the best. Hell yeah, hell yeah, dude! Freddy Krueger too. It's my fucking boy, dude. Fuck yeah! I fucking love that shit. I like all the fucking demonic shit. <laughs> he's so like, like yeah he's like, i love gone with the wind <laughs> gone with the wind Number titanic, one yeah, titanic. Yeah. the notebook yeah hey, you know all that i would say during this time i love like what did i watch yesterday i love i'll just put on like amc during this fucking of course month, put all the shit i saw uh, fear fest fear fest yeah i saw the omen Yesterday, that was right. fucking dope. Right movie. Awesome. Uh, the Exorcist, oh, The yeah. Exorcism of Emily Rose. I love that. Fucking, the way that bitch fucking played it, spot on, man. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Was, Dexter, um, Dexter's sister. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Or the chick that came out in White Chicks. That's how oh, I always remember her. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Like to go from that it to. Was a, it was a dude, though. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> but to go from that, right? To go from that type of movie to that, that's props to that actress, man. For real, um, right. yeah, dude. That that type of shit, I love. I, I I grew up uh going to like Catholic school and shit, dude. And I remember like one, of the, one of the priests, like I actually asked him. I was like, dude, have you ever seen? Because Catholicism is one of the only like um uh parts of of like the whole in religion at least that actually believes in like exorcisms. So like some of the Christianity does not really like correlate with that. And yep. um, so I actually asked one, one and out of, out of all the priests, one of them actually told me, he's like, dude, he's like, yeah, I, I was involved in an exorcism. And some of the shit that he told me was like uh, that he got called um, to the house of this older lady who was bed bound. Um, she had two caretakers that would take care of her. Um, when he walked in, right. He started with the whole little, they get the little, um, what is it that shit the fucking uh, incense the incense going on oh, the sage then, or whatever yeah, the sage yeah. yeah and then he started saying uh he started with the rosary said when he walked into the room that this bed bound lady was actually standing on the bed actually standing staring at him and speaking in latin um he it was he was not like the main priest that was like the one in charge of it he said that he like freaked the, i guess he freaked the fuck out and the other guy ended up taking over so he doesn't know what happened in the fucking end but that was his experience he was like i was i only took part in one exorcism exorcism and that was it and i, I remember him telling me that story dude when i was in like eighth grade and i was like man that's cool and then all these <laughs> other movies all these movies movies I, you know, I started watching these movies and i was like older and i was like man that is crazy because it's something that could be so real yet has no there's no rationale behind it no yeah it's trippy that's, man that's very that's fascinating no yeah i love i love exorcism emily rose the exorcist those are brilliant movies yeah no i, I i'm really have you seen like the uh like um haunting on hill house thing on netflix yeah oh, yeah you know, dude that's, that's just, just that's just so, so good, good dude so good and the same guy that did that made the new one, uh, Midnight Mass. And and as a, okay, so okay, so maybe this will hit you a little bit harder uh, too because it hit me extra hard because I was raised. I didn't go to Catholic school. I did go to public school, but I went to catechism, okay. and uh, every Sunday, every week. And I, I I've I've done every sacrament in the church outside of marriage. I've never been married, um, but I've done all the others and. Oh. So that, that show midnight mass is very, has a lot of very heavy Catholic themes to the point where they actually show a, a mass in the first few episodes, uh, with communion, communion and everything. And I was almost like getting a little PTSD, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like from those I, times, I, man. Yeah. I hate, I always hated that shit when oh, I was a kid, yeah. but they did it so well. And 
the the twist and how everything turns into a it's it's, it's a monster show really it's the only spoiler i'll give you um uh but it it, it, sure. oh man it's 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 really good and it it might hit you the way it hit me being okay. raised that way so yeah oh uh, dude so it's crazy, man. So that's why I like all that shit because uh, growing up, like I said, it was something that was always like a re- a possible reality. Yet there's there's no rationale behind it. There's no actual proof. Yeah, just stories and shit, you know. So yeah, man. How about you guys? I honestly don't watch a lot of scary movies. <laughs> that, not gonna lie, I just I don't get into it because there's really been nothing that scary since 1990 and below. You know. I don't know. It was the last thing Boomer. that uh, that was the last thing that scared Boomer. me. It. it. Oh, I mean, that was the original. It was, original it was pretty freaky. Dude, when he comes out of the sword, he's like, "My bitch." Like, 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 you know, that shit's fucking like, scary. The movie's dude. stupid. But that's. But, but, <laughs> but then you like, watch it now. When you yeah. watch it now, you're like, "Man, that's I stupid." Mean, but the, the movie, but back then, when you took it, scare me either. So. <laughs> so you then you don't have any scary movies? No, I don't. I'm actually into like the survival type, like um, like you gotta beat the game kind of like you know movie. Okay. So I'm into like the Purge, like that's actually one of my favorite movies. Dawn of the uh, Dawn of the Dead. I'm into zombies. oh zombies are the I shit. Zombies. Yeah. zombies are my favorite things in the world. Okay. Um, just shit like that. Like I'm not really into like slashers. My my favorite slasher is a uh, ghost face though. So scream. Yeah, scream. There's a new one, a new one of those coming, coming out. Coming out, yeah. Yeah. Okay, January. Yeah. It'll, 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 it'll finally is. kill Cindy or whatever. Yeah. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> <I'll> dumb <laughs> slut. <laughs> yeah, that dumb bitch will finally get what she did. All the boomers are going to be happy as fuck watching that. <laughs> 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 Shit, dude. Yeah, Ghostface. That's what's up, dude. That's a good one. That is a good one. Fair Scream. enough. Yeah. I, I, I'm definitely... Uh, I lean more toward, I definitely lean more towards monsters and paranormal stuff. Cause like, it's just, okay. I don't know with like, I, I, I just, I just feel like anybody on the, I don't know. I, I've been saying this lately. I feel like anybody on this podcast right now, any five of us could, uh, if, if someone was trying to kill us, all five of us have the ability to put our foot on their face and rip their fucking jaw off. So it's like, okay. I'm just, I'm just not that scared of people. You know what right I mean? That's why I, I don't really, I don't really, that's why I don't really gravitate towards like the, the saw, the hostel or, or anything with, um, like, uh, uh, like midsummer with, uh, cults, cults and things like that. I'm like, I, I, I watch those movies. I'm like, it would never get to that point with me. Like, I can't relate, you know? Like, yeah. so I'm, I'm, I'm definitely more on the side of, uh, uh, paranormal and, and, I, I love werewolves. I just love I love werewolves yeah. specifically. But yeah, nice. yeah. yeah, fair enough. Fair yeah, enough. I like Twilight too, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen it. I've never <laughs> seen <laughs> Teen Wolf. Teen I've Wolf. never seen that. I've never seen Teen Wolf either. Honestly, oh, come on. I like. Uh, Why, bro? That's <laughs> Uh, yeah, sure. um, um, American Werewolf in London is my go-to, but have, <laughs> have, have any of you seen this? Is this kind of interesting? Uh, a buddy of mine and I recently went to like all the Halloween stores up here and in our city, and we 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 noticed like every single one had this like not to be ignored, like a giant section uh, sectioned off, like with with even with like animatronic you know, lawn robots and stuff of this trick or treat movie. Have any of you seen trick or treat? Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. That, that shit's that bad. Familiar, that's that's bad. Ass. With that little fucking dude that has like a dirt over it, yeah. uh, sandbag over his head. Yeah. yeah. That shit's bad ass, dude. Watch it. Yeah. No, I just watched it for the first time and it, I think it's like almost 10 years old now. Yeah. And it's I, awesome. And I can't believe like it, that, it extra. I, I knew that it was a fairly old movie, so that's why it was so surprising that it had this giant display in all these Halloween stores up here. And so me and my buddy were like, "We got to watch this movie." So we watched it, and it blew me away. It's like the be- one of the best horror movies I've seen in the last ten years. And I can't believe there's not fi- considering it came out so long ago. I can't believe there's not five of them. You know, I yeah. can't believe they didn't keep that going. Brilliant monster, brilliant story, great, and it's an anthology. And it loops around on itself in an amazing, that's great writing. 
and it has cool werewolves in it. So yeah, dude, it's badass. It's a fucking badass movie. movie. I love that shit. I fucking love that movie. Yeah. If you if you guys liked okay, so if you guys liked that one and you're into heavy metal, I, I do have one recommendation for you before we go real quick. There's a new movie that just came out. The only reason why I know about it is because uh, Corey Taylor's in it. Of course, from Slipknot. Oh, shit. How the fuck do I not know about this movie, dude? <laughs> exactly. It's called Bad Candy. I don't know where you'll be. I, I, I can't even remember where I found it, to be honest. It's an extremely independent film. Uh, the special effects leave quite a bit to be desired, to put it nicely. Um especially in the beginning but trust me if you like trick or treat you will really enjoy bad candy imagine trick or treat with slightly shittier uh special effects but the whole thing is narrated by Corey taylor playing a radio dj and he does <laughs> that's dope and he does a great like honestly he does a really good job at that's the part like, he does a really good job so i highly recommend if you're looking for something new to watch this week before Halloween, check out Bad Candy. Bad Candy. Can I have to watch it? I'm going to watch yeah. it. 8 out of 10, bro. <laughs> it's great. But I have, I have fucking kept you guys for, for, for a lot longer than I anticipated. So I cannot okay. thank you enough thank for your you, time. Bro. We fucking love you. Love, love all you guys. You, thank you so thank fucking you so much. much dude. Uh, thank you guys for wanting to be on. It means the world to me. We, we, we honestly, when we started this, we never thought anybody would ever listen to us. And the idea that I'm having a metal band on from Texas right now is fucking insane to me. So Fuck yeah, man. thank you guys. You guys are welcome on the show anytime ever you have anything to promote, a tour, a new release. You just want to hop on and talk about ghosts or some shit. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah are fucking, if you're just bored, you're welcome. Like anytime you guys want, any of you want to hop on, you are more than welcome. And thank you so much for your time tonight. Hell yeah. Thank, Thank you, you, brother. Man. Appreciate Fuck it, man. You guys. Thanks, man. Thank One you. Love, man. Take care. Thank you. Definitely. I will uh, I'll end the recording here and then and then we'll hop off. All right. But uh thank you guys so much for being on tonight. Oh yeah. Thank you. This is what I'm talking about. It's this was one of those conversations where it literally I'd never talked to any of these guys before in my life. And it all, within the first 30 seconds, I felt like I'd known them. They've been friends from high school or something. It was insane. I, I love, this is why I love podcasting. This episode is an example of why I love podcasting because these guys are just fucking amazing. So be sure to check out all things Circa Arcana. They got a lot coming up. Links in the description below. But without further ado, my friends, my Crip crew, that's going to do it for this episode. So as always, raise your fucking horns and bang your goddamn heads and blast some fucking Circa Arcana. We love you all to death. Good night. Back. Not dead, the dark.